happy. This is not going to be a long stream, I hope, unless I do things very badly. Um, basically, this is just, I'm just going to be making a, taking a existing object for our safe mission uh, and making a simple jointed version of it. Um, the context is Snake's mission, a thief's training, has some statue heads that are basically supposed to function as levers. Uh, and there's some issues with that. Um, and um, if it had been a Thief 2 mission, um, they could have just used the lever script directly for it, but on the th in Thief 1 or Gold, the uh, standard uh, lever script doesn't support rotation tweaks, only joint tweaks. So what we're going to do is make a version of this thing that has a joint instead of just being a solid object. Um, so what we've got here, this is just a directory I've created for my FM in my Thief 1 editing folder, and I've just copied the model in there along with just replace GIFs so that when I import it into Blender, Blender can find those. Now I'm going to need a couple of things out of here. This is in... If you've installed the Drummond Toolkit, you'll have a tool subdirectory. Um, and somewhere here, 3ds to bin, I think. No. Yes, 3ds workshop. Here we go. We have a bin to E tool, which is decompiles the Blender model. Uh, sorry, the, the Dark Engine model into a .e text file. Um, and then bsp.exe does the reverse will take a um, e and make a dot bin out of it. Which I don't think I need here, but I'm just going to copy it in anyway. I uh, shouldn't need anything else from here. So you'll have these, these, I'm just copying them in here for convenience, so I can just do a command prompt right here in this directory and just say bin to e, risk a plane, what's it called, there we are. And uh, it's done that, it's done its thing, that's all it is. Now that's a plain text dot e file, we don't actually care much about the contents of that. Um, we're just going to import that into Blender. Blender can't read the drop bin. Uh, directly, it can read the .e using uh, an R. Now, hello, hello, Snake, welcome in. Uh, please feel free to jump in, and uh, if you have any questions about anything, and I will stop and explain anything. So, now we're going to Blender, but before we do, this is using the Blender New Dark Toolkit, um, which the first, which is here in uh, TTLG, the first page of the thread is not really the right place to be because it's an old version. Because uh, it was started by Telemed, and now it's our soul that updates it. Um, so that's the Blender New Dark Toolkit. Thread is there. And following the link there on the page, you actually have the downloads uh, for it. Uh, now that's, which is here, this zip file here. Now I've already got that installed, so I'm not going to be doing anything else with this page. I just wanted to bring these pages in here. This is the links you'll need to use. If you want to be um, using, creating uh, either standard object or anim or mesh, you know, creature, human object models with Blender. There are two other importer exporters that I'm aware of. There's Nemiax's one, uh, which I think is kind of abandoned. Uh, I think it was, only works in 2.8. I don't think it's up to date, up, been updated since. Um, Blender 2.8, that is. Uh, it did some things differently and some things better. Um, I haven't used it enough to know whether it does what I need. And re more recently, Skull has been working on Blender add-in to avoid using these um, command line tools as part of the pipeline. Um, and it's looking really promising. I've, I've poked it a bit, but I don't know what the current state of it is. I'm kind of been out of things. 
So I'm just going with the old fashioned, slightly clunky way that I know works. So, plug in your toolkit when it's enabled, adds this import.e, um, which go to. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Blender. Blender, please work like like you should. Well, never mind. I can't type a panel in there. Because Blender is silly. Uh, I'll just go manually to the directory where I kept this thing. So where's test head leader? Oh, import this. We won't bother with texture search. That's an option to look for textures in some other directory. We've got, I've just got the replace guess right in here. So I don't need to touch it. That's the standard forward up. And you normally should never ever change that because otherwise your object will usually appear sideways or upside down or something. All right, it's an exciting object. Um, and if we change the view here, wait while well, Blender compiles shaders. That's what I wanted. We can kind of see that it's got the replace gifs on there. We don't really care. We're not actually modeling this. We're not texturing. We're not really changing anything about the model itself. Uh, except instead of being this being the object, I just think this is the face of it and this is the back of it. I'm not sure. Except instead of this being the object, we're going to make that the a sub object. We're going to create, make that the jointed sub object. It is a beautiful statue head. So normally, you know, you'd be doing stuff with, with your model and stuff. What I'm going to do first is just save this in the same place as, um, I don't know what it's called there. What was it? What was the name of it? Re Res Kepline one. Don't know what that means. I'm just going to use the same name and just put a J in there. The jointed. Um, I would have named it something differently, but I'll keep the same name for continuity. So a jointed object is basically, you have multiple, and normally you have one object per, uh, one blender object per part of your thing in, in the actual um, exploded model. So we're going to have, need multiple parts. You can have multiple blender objects in a single part if it's easy to manage the blender side that way, but for simple stuff, it's it's just a one-to-one. -one. So what we need is we need something for this. We want this to be the jointed part. I guess it might be, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to quickly do a new one here. And let's find a uh, actual jointed stock object, right? Just for just for to look at. Um, let me look up what the arcing lever is, because that'll be a useful reference. So we go to an uh, option words physical gizmo switches levers arcing lever. Let's take the arcing unlabeled. Its model name is switch arc B. Okay, that's what we need. Close that for the moment. Oh yeah, we'll just take that one. Now we're not going to have, I don't know the textures for it. I'm not going to bother copying the textures in. I'm just going to import that here so you can see what that looks like. Um, as a bit of reference for what I'm doing. Oh, I need to bend it here as well. There we go, done. Right, so that is the object. That's the arcing lever in uh here we've got the base object base lever here uh, i think if we do this yeah it just goes all white because we've got no textures we have a sub object with a weird name at s double o b b that's the bit that swings around we have this other weirdly named bit at x double o double a 2500 now in both of those the a a and b b is just a two character identifier it doesn't it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent with the way you name parts, but all the other bits are actually meaning specific things, and I'll get back to that in a minute. So we'll have to we'll have to be following a naming pattern, something like that, to make the join. But basically, you've got the base of the object, you have an axis around which it is either around which the thing rotates or along which a piece moves. 
for a joint that's mo that's a linear motion instead of rotation. So here is the rotation axis, and that's the bit that rotates. And as you can see, it's position that it rotates around that axis there. All right, so we'll go back to the previous one. So what, really, all we're doing is going to be naming things with the right parts there. Um, all right, we need something for it to rotate around as well. What I'm going to do is just create a little mesh plane here, just a tiny one, and uh, scale that down. Oh, you know what? I just realized I haven't. I should turn on this. I enabled it. I set it up, and it's not turned on. All right. Now you can see if I hit blend, hotkeys and blender, that they're selected there. So. Um, right, come back, add mesh plane, go to edit mode. We want to scale it down so it's really tiny. In fact, let's change modes here. Uh, let's go just into wireframe mode for a second so we can see. Yeah, you're never going to see this. The whole point of this plane is, never, is it's never going to be seen. So um, we want to move that down to this exact same place as these. And to do that, I need to change my snapping. Snap to vertex. So let's grab, move it on the z-axis, and snap to that vertex there. All right, and that should be all we need. It's a little weird that this is missing a polygon, huh? Hang on a second. That's a that's maybe a bug in the import. Sometimes some objects don't import properly. Yeah, this this one did not import properly for, for whatever reason. It's missing a, it's got the triangles on the base me, messed up. That's a little awkward. Um, well, it doesn't actually matter. I can just fix that by uh, leaving that face and just recreating it. We don't actually care what's on the bottom of this one, thankfully. Like in terms of texture, right? You never see the bottom. So if the texture is mapped badly, I guess it doesn't matter. Seems to have picked it up somewhat. Okay, anyway. All right, that would have caused an error when we exported it if I hadn't done that. So. All right, so that's. Is that the way we want to rotate around? Probably. Uh, and I need to move the origin of that down there. Yeah, you will, in your case, you never see the bottom. Um, if you're using it for something else, you might. All right, now the other thing we need to do is we need a vertical line. And Blender doesn't have a convenient uh, give me a line. And there is this one from a uh, add on. So I'm just going to take the cube here. And I'm just going to select everything except this. I'm going to invert selection, delete faces. Uh, actually, I want to delete all these vertices as well. Hit line. Uh, and we want to move that. Mental blank. Um, we can just move it like that. Now, being in a line, it doesn't. An axis doesn't really matter how tall it is, where its center point is. So we'll just leave it right there, as long as it is going through. It is the actual line of rotation that we want. Um, Okay, so hang on, have I got two planes here? Oh, what's that one? I don't know, I must have done something with that one. We should only have the three parts. All right, we have the three parts we need. Now, I could actually put this bit in the middle, but BSP, the thing that actually builds the stuff, sometimes complains when I do that. So now, all we need to make 
for joints. And the naming for joints is Larry G read up a very good uh, thing here, which is a lot of stuff to take in, but I'm only going to point out the important bits we need. Um, where we have a base object, sub object, and an axle object. That's just describing what things are, and there's got a diagram here of some different versions. Uh, but I'm just going to read here. So, the base object, only the first two characters of the name are significant. Um, and this is the base object now. So we're going to call that... I don't know. The easiest to just use A, A, B, B and stuff like that, right? Um, anyway, as I said, you, that's, his, that's his recommendation, and I follow it because it's basically just A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and unless you're really complicated, that just makes it easy to keep track of what's what. Now, the axle is rotating at X, and uh, it is this at X. JJ is joint number, so zero is, is the first joint, uh, counting from zero rather than one as in Dromid. Then you have the name of the base it's attached to, which in our case is called AA. And then you have the degrees of movement. So we're just going to say zero because we're going to say no checking. That's a thing that was important back in the old days of Thief with the software renderer. It's not important ever since you've been doing hardware rendering, basically. If you've got a transparent object with joints in it, you might need to worry about that degrees of movement, but anything else doesn't matter. So this is the axle, so it's going to be called at x double o because it's joint one, the first joint, but it counts from zero, a a because that's what it's attached to, and then zero 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 zero. Should I get that right? Yes. X j j o b n n n. Then the sub object is at s followed by the joint number followed by a name of the sub-object. So this is going to be at S, sub-object. It's attached to joint zero, and it's going to be called BB, because it's just the second thing. That's it. So that should now function as a jointed object once we finish exporting it again. Uh, so let's do it. Export.bin. So it's ordered to build the name. Now I'm going to look through all these objects here. Selection only no, because I just wanted to use all the stuff we've got there. Center object should always be on. Um, if you haven't made your thing to be centered at the origin, then this will recenter it. If you don't have it centered, things don't often don't work properly in Thief. Um, it is technically possible to have objects where the center isn't of the object is not the geometric center of it, but it goes wrong sometimes, and I've never I don't know understand exactly why. Uh, smooth angle is um, any corners less than that will get smoothed, which is fine. That's so we don't get these will be all be smoothed, and these ones will not be smoothed. But these ones will not be nice and smooth. That should be a de reasonable default. If P optimization zero is the what you should generally use. Use complain or limit. I can't be bothered explaining. I don't. They say disable this if you can see errors in your object shape. Yeah. Uh, and to be honest, um, just the default is fine generally. Change this if you get small gaps in the model or flattened faces. Yeah. Now these two are super important. Like where is your BSP directory, where does it find bsp.exp? Exe. And um, that is not right. Don't know why that's got the wrong directory there. Um, unless I actually put it there. Oh, I did. Okay, so that's right for me. Um, now, that can be... Now, I've got BSP here, so it could be that. It can be your tools this directory here, but the problem with using this one is it's got spaces in it in the 3 ds to bin part of the name, and some stuff doesn't like doing that. So I would just recommend all this stuff in this workshop subdirectory. Copy all of that somewhere convenient as a, here's some PSP tools, maybe just copy it straight out 
into here, right? So you just get tools workshop. Um, but again, if your thief directory has spaces in it, that's awkward as well. Um, probably try not to do that. Anyway, the important thing is, is this directory is where uh, bsp.exe is for making normal objects and uh, mesh build is for making um, creatures, humans, the uh, skills and objects. Games directory is not relevant to me because that's basically where this is one going to try and copy textures to. Uh, or the dot bin. I want to, not to copy the bin anyway. I want it to just to save it right here. Um, and I do not want it to copy textures. So I'm going to say never. I don't care about deleting the temp files. In fact, it's useful to keep them around. This is not a mesh object. It's not, uh, not a skeleton object for AI. So we leave that unchecked and ignore that. So normally the only things I have to check, like it re remembers these settings. I have to check whether I've got selection or not because sometimes I only export the selected pieces, sometimes I want it to export everything. Um, and I then I check whether bin copy and copy textures are the way that I want them to run right now. Um, the idea behind these is to copy them directly into your thief uh, ob and object text uh, directories, but um, when you're working on an FM, that's not really the right place to have them. So I just don't use, I don't use this to copy them. I just do it myself. Anyway. Let's export it. Error, AA has no materials. Okay, that is a thing I forgot. Every object needs a material of some kind. We will just take one of the materials that's already there and apply that to it. We don't care because it's a little bit here that you're never supposed to see, right? So let's try that again. Check the settings, being copy, copy text never. Oh, and this one has no materials. Everything just needs a material on it. Now, if I... I could just create a, a blank material for those, which I might in some other case, but... Um, just reusing one of the existing ones, because you're not seeing those things. They don't really matter too much. All right, done, it says. Now, if I hit Shift F8, or uh, they might have changed that window toggle system console, um, you get to see the output. So what it actually run, ran is this, run bsp.exp with all these parameters. That's actually what it runs. So that's the .e file it's creating. That's the, sorry, it's reading. That's the .bin it's creating. This is the coplanar limit setting. This is the optimization setting. Uh, I don't remember what these ones mean. And that's the smoothing angle or the cosine and smoothing angle. Um, when BSP runs, it tells us, okay, it sees the root object AA we created. And it says there's a sub object, which is this one here, BB, connected via this axis. So that's just confirming that we actually have named this and BSP has seen it as the stuff we need. Uh, you normally don't need to look at this, but it's useful to check in case it comes out. Sometimes, sometimes BSP will spit an error up in here that the um, add-on doesn't pick up as an error. So it's sometimes useful to look at the console there. Okay, that should be everything we need to do with Blender, unless I've fucked anything up. So let's go into um, into here, test head labor. Um, well, I guess we're doing your object. We don't have anything, right? Oops. Oh, damn it. My uh, mouse, right mouse button is multi-clicking. My left mouse button, both the buttons on this mouse are failing. So that was... Clicking more than it should. All right, we want to create an object. We want to create a new lever type, I guess. Um, I mean, we could just use an arcing lever and just modify the uh, the settings for it. We create create a new archetype. Uh, I'm not planning to save this as a .cal. Um, so let's not create an archetype for this. Let's just use the uh, one of these already. And we'll just modify the settings on it. It's slightly simpler. We'll give it something to stand on to as well. We'll 
Okay. Make that solid. Let's also avoid burning our eyes too much. And uh, apply some textures here. All right. And on this one, let's just give it uh, that. All right. So first thing we're going to do is change the model on this. So what we need, what are we going to need? We're going to need to change the shape. Model name uh, is going to be called Resk Clean One J. Did that work? Did I type it right? I did. Cool, so now we can floor that. I don't know which way it's facing. Let's give some texture replacement on it as well. Uh, this is just using the main statue, the stock statue textures, I believe. I'm copying these from the way that uh, Snake had them set up. And I have just got uh, some notes on my other screen. I think that's one okay well, we'll leave it oriented uh just in the default position just for the moment while we get it set up what's the next thing we need to add so the other things you want to do you want to have joint positions uh that's the wrong thing what did i click modality okay joint positions is fine that's the default because I am not creating an archetype, if I was doing an archetype, I'd be putting the tweak joints on the archetype itself, but here we're putting it on here. So what do we have? Joints, stop tweak, when it stops spinning, uh, sim, so it always runs even if you're not looking at it, or a few miles away, scripts, so that the standard lever script can handle it, primary joint is the first joint, and it is also running with sim, importantly, that's the speed it rotates, Let's make it a bit faster and let's make it go 180 degrees, I believe. From 0 to 180. Okay. Now it inherits the standing lever script from down here, so we don't need to change that. Um, could change the class tags if you want to change the sentence that it uses, but I'm not changing that either for now. So let's just save. Uh, test head lever.fm. And let's see if any of that works. Well, it highlights it throbs, but it does not move. But something's all right. Also, this is too tall. Oh, well, one reason why it wouldn't move is I haven't even loaded the scripts. So let's let's try having scripts here so any leaders will work. There we are. It rotates 180. My mouse, my mouse button is double clicking there, so sometimes it was not rotating as I click. All right, let's connect it to something. Um, alarm light, emergency light, I think. No, that's that's unlit. Ramirez alarm. Is that an animal light? I don't know. You know what, let's, create it. let's connect it to a torch. Because uh, I know torches are animals, right? We'll turn on and off. Without me having to do anything. We'll just change the uh, light radius here a little bit. And brightness. Well, brightness is, fun, is kind of okay, I guess. Make it very limited radius. Okay. Also, we want it to start off, right? Oh. Yeah, oh, being a torch is animating still. Whoops. Um, what's the tweak models? This is a problem. I shouldn't have done this with a torch. Tweak models. We want it to start on five. And not be on. Ah, that's wrong as well. 
Fuck it. Let's use uh, let's use another light. All I want is somebody to turn on and off. Um, well, let's make this just a pain to set these up. Um, it'll make sound too. So let's hide that. Uh, it doesn't have a light. It doesn't have scripts. What even is it for? Add um, render a self illumination. Add render a own light. Uh, put a minimum for the moment, 60, 60, maximum brightness, make it not very big, make it small. Okay, let's just, before we hook this one up, oh, I guess let's just hook this one up. Uh, two, two, three, we're going to, I'm just going to use control Q, because that's what I've got set up to do quick links. Um, but that was just basically creating a control device from the lever to the uh, light, which should turn it on and on. If we've got on and off, if we've got everything set up right. And that's just a standard leap. That's just a plain old lever, as far as the game is concerned. So it does all the stuff exactly like a lever does. Um, so now, now we've got that done, now we just rotate it so it's facing the way we want, right? We just make two of these. We'll uh, put the lights above each one individually. And let's link this one, which is four, to this one, which is five. What is that the old fashioned way? There we go. Oh, oops, I didn't portalize and, and relight. That one works. This one works. And we turn them both off. Now, what we actually want to do with this one is have this one... Have it so this one has to face towards us and this one has to face the wall. Which is just logic now. Uh, so we'll get rid of that connection we just made. And we'll add an inverter. Let's just put it down here. So I'll link that to the inverter and link the inverter to the light. And now, now this is going to be off. We can't use script control flags properly again because of uh, this being thief one, not thief two. Otherwise, you could just switch to the invert with script control flags on the lever itself. Um, but what we want now is if if it is run, right now this one turns on when it's facing the wall. And this one turns on when it's not facing the wall, but it starts off is the problem. So we want to have the joint state. We want it to be running when the game starts, which means it turns around. That lever turns on, which means the light turns off, which is the wrong way. So we want the lever to be turning off when the game starts. So we just say on reverse there. And now that lever has finished turning to the position it was actually started in. Sends off its turn on to the inverter, which sends a turn on, on, sorry, sends a turn off to the inverter, which sent turn on to the light. So that one's on when it's facing the wall, this one is off when it's facing the wall. Hello, Jane. Uh, and now, obviously, if we wanted to have multiple ones of those, uh, we could just take a require all trap. We have a combination that we need, right? Put it here, we'll create another light. Put it here. And so we'll just say, okay, this goes to the require all. And this inverter goes to the require all. I'm going to move that inverter so you can uh, see. It sits a little bit, a bit more easily. And the require all goes to this light here. Oops, did I not relight? Okay, so now 
this light will turn on when both of these are on. So normally, obviously, these lights behind here are just for debugging, so we can see where they're on. This would be like whatever you're trying to trigger once the right combinations installed. So this light is now on. I guess it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Well, no, I guess it's it's reasonably easy to see the difference. Um, I can make these I can make these radiuses much smaller. Let's just make the radiuses on all of them one, which is going to look horrible, but be very clear as to which ones are turned on and which ones aren't, because they just will not spread light very far. Yeah, that's a bit better. And that's it. That's that's the whole thing. So the really good thing, that, I mean, obviously the logic is familiar to people. Um, the uh, thing there was really just the creation of the jointed object from an existing object, which is a pretty straightforward process. And it was really all I was sitting up here to uh, show. Um, and it is just a matter of, here we've got a base, little tiny plane thing. Now, I did put that out here, right at the bottom of the existing object, so that we wouldn't have to do any fancy stuff with bsp.exp. One of the things that uh, the thief model, the bsp.exe, the model, model compiler tries to do by default, I don't know what the settings um I don't know where all the settings that New Dark Toolkit um, uses by default are off the top of my head. Uh, I guess it's actually worth mentioning. If we have a BSP, we can do this. BSP slash question mark. No. Just run it without anything. Without any arguments. And it just tells you all the, all the options. Uh, which is a lot of stuff. Um, ah, dash B is about boats. That's what was telling us, showing us the, uh, the joints and sub-objects that we had. Uh, dash N is usually good to have. It's usually fine to have these days, unless you've got transparencies. If you don't have any transparent textures, um, then dash N is fine, and your objects and no optimization stuff is fine. Um, but what it tries to do is it tries to make sure that it can represent the whole thing in a way that's good for the software renderer uh, and is also still important for the um, for transparencies. Anyway, getting BSP to work properly in complicated cases is a whole other topic. But this is a simple case, and it didn't need any tweaking; it just worked. So uh, that's really it. It's all it's all there. It's all it's all working. We didn't have to do anything fancy here. We just set it up like we'd set up any other lever object with joints. Um, and it works. Now, if this was an actual mission, I would have set up an archetype for it with the um, with the joint setup on it. I might have even set up two archetypes, one that would default off with the joint state set accordingly as well. But um, that's it, yeah. So uh, I will end the stream here, unless, well, I guess if there's any questions about any of that, uh, ask away, otherwise I'll end the stream in a few minutes. Take a sip of coffee. I don't know if I mentioned it, Blender, I'm using version 3.0 here, but uh, Blender New Dark Toolkit should be fine even in the latest 4. Point whatever, of, I think it's 4.1 of Blender. Uh, I'm just using 3.0 because that's what I was using when I started on the last Thief mission I started and I had everything working and didn't want to uh, change that. Let's turn this off now. No questions?
All right. Well, I'm going to end the stream here. Thanks for stopping by, Jane. Um, sorry, it's not anything more entertaining. Uh, Snake. I hope that was uh, educational. Um, or anyone else watching, because I'm going to put this up on YouTube in my Dromid stuff just for uh, completeness' sake. And uh, yeah, see you later.